Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, I'm a disloyal person. This, this is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Oh, yeah. Go there, join the militia. Happy. Get that out of order. Happy. What the hell day is it? Thursday. Thursday. Happy Thursday, Thursday. Okay? It's been a minute. All right. We were going to cover the ACC tournament, but it didn't happen for Syracuse. And and what didn't happen was much. Uh, 19 turnovers, 30 points. And um, the officiating was not a factor, but it sucked. I mean, mm. eh, you know, I think it killed momentum at the very least. Let's put it that way. Took a, Is that took fair? us out of our game. Yeah, took it us did. out of our game. It, I thought that one play where Judah got right across the face. Well, that was a problem. They stole it, went down, and, you know, and then he got oh, teed up. Teed that up, was, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we were we wanted to talk about it. We wanted to come back before the tournament, but uh, we knew we weren't going to be selected to the NCAA tournament after last Wednesday. So we decided to wait until Sunday so that we could, you know, see what happened, where we ended up. And um, as we'll get into when we what we found out on Sunday and into Monday, that's why now it's Thursday. We were waiting for some news to drop. Some news drop Monday, and you know, here we are. Here we are, and uh, NC State goes on to just, you know, handle the tournament pretty well. Okay, yeah. o- overtime game win against Virginia. They beat Louisville, Syracuse, Virginia, or Duke, Virginia, UNC. North Carolina. So is that the order it went? I think it was. And yep. um, you know, I guess all is well. Like my wife said, when the game was when we when the game was over essentially before the clock hit zero but the game was pretty much over was it we don't look so terrible now losing nc state which is true but we also uh you know it's the gut you know you you beat a team twice like that in the season and then i was right but i was not that i was right it was that it's just for me it just gives me a sick feeling yeah you know we could have played a louisville we could have played a whoever pitt yeah, well, Pitt's playing at a higher level, I think, right now anyway. And you can argue your point that you made yesterday while we talked. Um, that I'll get there. Okay. Um, so, well, you're going to either get there right now or not, because this conversation that we're about to have is probably going to take up the rest of the show. Okay. Well. So, go ahead and make your point. We talked on the phone yesterday. Once again, should have recorded it. That happens quite a bit. I should probably stop, just stop calling. Inventing. My frustrations, airing my grievances. Well, I mean, you don't want me to text, so. <laughs> oh no, no, no! You're right. I don't. You're right. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, no. Um, just again, you know, um, something's got to be said about the net. It wasn't just ACC teams. There were some other teams too that felt like they got, you know, kind of screwed a little bit with some seating and stuff. Mountain West really didn't get the respect that the net gave them. But then, you know, most of the other teams in these conferences that had the respect from the net, they, they got, you know, respect. So it was a little weird. And, um, you know, there was about three or four teams that took some, took some bubble spots away, you know, and, you know, NC state winning could have took Pittsburgh out of it. Right. Some of those other teams, you know, they got in there that took some, uh, some bubbles away that, um, you know, that could have taken some spots away, but I mean, it just again goes to why the end of the year should mean more than you know the beginning. Uh, you look at Virginia; they had the resume to get in, but by the end of the year, they weren't playing so great, and it doesn't mean that they shouldn't have have an opportunity. But you know, when you got a team like Pittsburgh playing the way that they were, and and going, you know, winning twelve out of the last sixteen, and not getting in, and then not even you know going into the NIT to decline the invitation like us. Um, it just it, it stinks for a team like that because that team was on the rise. They were playing well, and I think that they could have performed pretty good in this tournament. Yeah, I think they're playing <clears throat> at a higher level than UVA. I and mean, we talked about UVA kind of, if anything, going in the other direction. And 
I mean, they just proved our point that it's not the U- UVA that we're used to seeing. And that's just, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Uh, so, anyways. Yeah, well, that one was pretty embarrassing for them. Col- what was it, Colorado Four- State? 14, 14 points in the first. No, Virginia's oh, game. That's what I'm saying. It was Colorado State, playing, though, right? Yeah, or who the hell was it? Col- yeah, it was Colorado okay, State, yeah. which, again, people, there's a lot of people that didn't think that. They, they thought they were going to be up there. They didn't think Colorado State was going to get uh, a playing game. So, uh, you know, I think that they had motivation to go out there and do that. But 14 points in the first half. And, I mean, I think they went at one point like 10 minutes without scoring. Uh, only ended up with 42 points. They ended up losing 67-42. It's like, ah. Uh. They got UVA'd. Yeah, they did. <laughs> right. To taste yeah. their own medicine. Well, it's the way that they play, right? Yeah. They play tough defense. They play slow. If you get out on them and you get them out on their rhythm and you make them play fast and make them have to score, then that's when when you uh, that's when Virginia starts to get blown out like that. I just noticed something, and don't be alarmed or anything, but we're not recording any of the audio of this, so I'm solely relying on the video to be recorded after. Hmm. So there's that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Just, just, in, just in case this has happened before where I forgot to record a whole show. I hit the wrong button or something. And we had to do two, two of the same shows in one night. You remember that? That was, yeah, fun. I do. That was I hope fun. That doesn't, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. All right. So look, uh, you know, I was mounting frustrations and, um, you know, I just, from my perspective and, and anyone who's listened for any amount of time know, knows I'm kind of a cynical guy and, um, you know, I just don't have time for games and, and, and by games, I mean all of the added things that come with some of the things that are going on in the NCAA right now. Like I said to Joe yesterday, I mean, it's like, it's just not fun for me. Like, this is not fun. You know, you see a, a, a Justin Taylor go in the portal. You're kind of like, okay, well, you know, kind of expected that. Maybe just not a good fit for Syracuse, Um, right. uh, you know, for both. Well, you know, boy, the fans are talking about that guy, too. Just, I wouldn't want to play here. Well, I guess it's justified that he made the right decision. Um, now, you can have an opinion and say, you know, well, I don't think he was that good. It won't be that big of a loss. And, I mean, I'm not in the camp of, he wasn't that good. It won't be a big loss. But I mean, if I'm on the fence, I would jump that way. I'm just saying, for, it, to be completely honest, I just feel like that, you know, he had room to grow. I would have loved for him to do it here. Uh, I'm not yeah. someone that's okay. I'm not someone that's going to go online and lambast anybody. But to each his own. I mean, yeah. look, it, there's a line though, and um, I think you can read comments and know what the line is. Okay, when it comes to be ad hominem attacks. And, and and things like that, you kind of make it personal. That's where I draw the line, and and that's all I'll say about that. Okay, but yeah. well, dude, but, that guy was forced into play, right? I mean, it, realistically, if you look at it, if Benny works out, and I mean that was Benny's spot, right? And if Benny, if he works out, and Chance Westry doesn't get hurt, and some of these other guys don't get hurt, then he's probably on the bench. No one's even talking about him, right? But because we had all those he transfer anyway, he had to come. Does, he had to come, yeah, right? But because he was in that situation, he had to come in and he had to play out of position and play minutes. And, you know, when you play minutes and you don't produce, our fans start, they just kill you. They rake you over the coals in the social media. Well, I think our fans suck worse than any of the players on the team. And that's not all fans. <laughs> I, I, it's not all of our fans, but I think a lot of our fans suck. I mean, I think uh, the age of social media and, the, and I guess the, the generation that's grown up in it <laughs> It, I just like I, that's why I can't get down Instagram with some of the, it's why I can't get down with some of this stuff, dude. And I mean, I, I can't I, I can't get down I can't get down with the portal, man. The the NIL is getting dumber and dumber. It is not something that I envisioned when we talked about this. We talked about guys being we talked about we're so stupid looking back on this. We're so dumb. Guys like being in net. commercials. Yeah. Guys being in commercials, selling, doing autograph sessions, uh, selling jerseys online. Like th- this is what I'm thinking, right? They're going to have their own business. They're going to have people promote them in stores. They're going to have, you know, I think that's gonna... what it was supposed to be. Dude, I don't think so. Well, then what the frick, man? Why didn't NCAA well, 
did the NCAA grab this thing by the horns and take control over? They they like to control everything else. Like, it's just gotten so dumb. And you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. This portal stuff sucks. I think loyalty is gone in basketball. Quadier is, is going to be... I loved Quadier, okay? I loved him. He doesn't have any loyalty to us, though. So, I mean, look, you got to do what you got to do. But, I mean, I mean... Whatever, I don't have nothing bad to say about the guy. I'm sad he's leaving. I'd love to keep him, but I'm not going to play the game where I'm going to get all bent out of shape about it, barely get to enjoy them, and then they're either going to be walking on to somewhere else or they're going to be offered money that Syracuse can't pay or they're going to play these games where they go in the portal, they find out, you know, let's get offers here, let's get offers there. Now now we're working back and forth. What percentage of players make it out of college into the pros anyway? I mean, this is a who, – who thought that a get-rich-quick scheme for 18-year-olds was a fantastic idea? Like, if I would have known that this is what it was going to be, I could have told you this thing is doomed from the get-go. And that's yeah. what it is. It's, it, it's dumb. It's doomed. Now it's legal. Now it's legal, and now it's even more dumb. That's why NLO stands for. Now it's legal. And, that's a, and it's the thing, right? It's this, those collectives where essentially now you have boosters and alumni and people, they create these LLCs, these small businesses, and now it's legal because there's a little bit of a loophole, right? And again, the NCAA, I mean, that's hard to kind of to kind of attack, right? I mean, at the end of the day... It's 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 difficult, right? You got to go the, with legal. The NCAA doesn't have it. Well, now you've got, you know, now we've got uh, Clemson joining a lawsuit, and that's a whole another story about TV rights and may or may not leave, and all of this realignment stuff. Like, dude, it's getting dumb. It's getting dumb. The arguments for NIL, some of them are good. I'm not going to sit here and say that they're bad. I'm not. I'm not saying I don't think players deserve to be compensated. Uh, uh, you know, after the NCAA is making billions off the backs of these athletes, but this is just not. I'm just so naive in in in. I'm usually such a cynical prick too, man. You know, I'm just so naive and I just try to see the good in some things that for, for these guys that, you know, I, I just think that, um, it's dumb. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you want to leave, leave. I, I have no, I hold no grudge. I hold no alliance. I'm sorry. I'm just not Ooh, just I, like I, them. Exactly. I, I mean, I'm not going to be loyal to anybody. This is quite here for me. Quite here for me was a four-year player. I was thinking of being able to enjoy this guy for four years and watch well, him develop. Next you're year. never going to get to do that anymore. At least next year, you're you're not who, who you're not going to get to do that anymore. That's what the that's the college basketball and football, bro. That we grow well, unless grew you up pay. with this. You got to pay them to keep them. You got to pay to keep them now. And now it's a, now it's a now it's a it's a freaking it's too much of a business, and um, you know money corrupts everything. And yep. money has corrupted this beyond repair. Now, mm-hmm. you know, um, all things only. Now there's high school agents, or now there's college oh, agents. Oh, these guys are getting offers out. in high school, and yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, but what I'm saying is is that there's agents in, in college, which get the college, where they're like, hey, I'll help you get some NIL money for this percentage, right? And, you know, you got people that are probably trying to take advantage of kids that don't know anything about money, right? Um, it's just, it's an awful idea. Uh, they could have it's, done this. It's, it is, it is, it is. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to let you. Yeah, no, you're it, good. It is, there's a predator aspect to this where the people you're mentioning don't give a rip about these athletes. They just know they can have, they have a chance to, to line their pockets uh, with whatever deal they can get these kids. And, you know, I think that at the end of the day, a lot of futures are going to be ruined because of this. You know, go ahead and you make your point and we'll get into the rest of it. Make your point. I'm sorry. Did you forget it? That's my bad. Dak, I mean, <laughs> what I was going to say, what I was going to say was I was going to say that their NCA could have done something to get these kids a little bit of money and not have to change the transfer portal rules. I still think if, if you, if, if you, didn't change the transfer rules, then I think that it wouldn't be as crazy. Obviously, there would still be some things. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the NCAA is always going to be like, oh, for the kids, for the kids. And I just – it's bull. It's bullshit. It's – you're putting a little bit of money in their pocket, maybe a lot of money from where they're coming from, right? But these kids ultimately, they want to make th- – their thoughts are, I want to get to the NBA. I want to make millions. And now really what you're doing is – you're basically giving these kids, you know, oh, 
coach isn't treating you right. Oh, you're not getting your way. Bye. Right now, there's no accountability. Now there's oh, I I don't like it here. I don't like the way they're treating me. I, I'm just gonna leave. Right? Like I mean, college is supposed to be where you develop, you know, young people to be adults to, be ready for the real to, world, to get ready right? for the real be world adults because the real accountability world is kick you in the nuts over and over again yeah. right adversity you can't just you can't just at your job say well i don't want to do that i don't like you and then what where, where are you going you can't just turn around and just choose the job that you want the job you're going to right you can't do that in relationships you can't do that in anything so it's just it's like you said it's it's a situation where now these kids i mean how hard are they trying right i mean when you don't have that much money you can't really do anything right so you're on you're in your dorm or you're on campus or you're doing things that you know homework looking at your uh, or you're working on your skill you're working on your craft doing all those things when you have money then you can go and you can do things i just when kids are staying in and taking nil money instead of moving on into professional because nil they make you know, unless they get into the NBA, then they're going to make more money in college in the NIL. Um, they're not giving them the, them the incentive to work hard. And it's, 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 it's easy to take the easy path. And when you open up the doors and you unlock it and you just allow them to do it with no repercussion and no discipline, then that's not, that's not helping any, any of these kids. Yeah. And, in, in, you know, just to back up the transfer rule, okay, because you and I talked about this. We've talked about it before when it changed. We talked about um, just the rule in general changing and in, in the pros and cons of it. And we said, oh, well, one time, right? One time. Well, one time is a lot when, you, when you're when you talking about 40,000 kids or whatever it is, right? So, um, you know, we've talked about it, all things orange. brought it up in the, in the thread on on Twitter about how you know going back to a one a, a one year sit could change some of this stuff. And obviously, that's probably the only that's like the easiest fix for this. Okay, the the immediate transfer stuff came during COVID, and you know, COVID just everybody just took that as an excuse to run with every dumb idea that popped into their tiny brains and um you know that's where that was born from and you know i think there's a there's a really good point to be made that maybe you know we go back to sitting for a year because you want to talk about player development you want to talk about graduation rates i don't know if anybody's heard nick saban's talk and i don't know what his solutions are and i don't know um, you know, beyond his, the points that he made in regards to just the NIL and the transfer portal in general, um, where, you know, he brought up the graduation rates, he brought up the, the player development and that the fact that two, then speak strictly talking about football, two NFL coaches came to him and, and told him these kids aren't resilient coming into the NFL anymore. They're not resilient. They're not yeah, accountable. Coach. They're not um, developed properly. And, all of this comes down to greed and selfishness for me and on and, and the parts of many. Not, I'm not talking about just athletes. And that's what I'm talking no. about, the predatory aspect of this where the people making money or a percentage off of these kids and don't give a rip about their future. And I think that um, Nick Saban has a ton of, a ton, a ton of, ton of um, really good points. And... Um, you know, the well, it goal, does, but money makes money. Money, right? m- money makes money, but you got to think about the percentage of of kids who don't make it to the pros, and then they're sitting there left. You know, they left early, maybe. Okay, you're not getting a scholar, or you're not getting, um, you know, you're not getting degree. a degree if you leave early, right? Now, and you're going to make temporary money. It doesn't set you up the way it used to set you up. It doesn't set you up anymore. The NCAA no. is in, in the people involved in all of this get rich get uh, get rich quick scheme, are are doing an injustice to these kids and everybody can make their own decisions but th- you need guidance and like you said you know you don't know where a lot of these kids come from and you can assume that that many of them, I mean come from I mean I know how I grew up I, if someone was waving a bunch of money in the village East Syracuse living in a freaking duplex at one point if you wave a bunch of money in in, in my face uh, you know in high school to play college wherever i'd jump right on it i mean oh yeah it's very tempting um men's basketball yeah, men's i'm sorry men's basketball has a um 
I'm sorry, there's about 20,000 participants in uh, men's basketball. It's about a 1.2% NCAA to major pro rate. Just so you know. Yeah. 1.2%. So you're going to need this temporary money. You may or may not get a scholarship or, excuse me, a degree. Uh, Nick Saban said every time, you know, every time a transfer, a student transfers, it, you can take 20% off of the probability of them graduating. That's 20. If you do it once, that's a lot. 20%, that's a lot. And all the work that goes into that, along with along with your athletics and whatever you're involved with, and practice and travel and all that stuff, like dude, it's setting these kids up for failure. And that's and that's that's I think that's one of the that that's one of the problems that's not going to show up. I don't think until maybe the end of next year, right? Because we got to get like four years under our belts, right, to have the freshmen go all the way through, right? So this is like. And stop. No, nope, because it's pretty much now we got to get used to. I mean, there's going to be a four to six player turnover every single year. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be tough for programs like Syracuse to keep up with any of this stuff, too. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, um, I, I think I think some of the frustrations from fans, you know, I think it's I'm in that camp. So, of course, I'm a little biased, but I think it's it's righteous anger i think that it's it's just like you're taking something that we grew up with and we love and you're flipping it on its head it's just not the same it's why like it's, that's why i'm saying it's just not fun anymore i mean it's just not you know i'm a traditionalist in almost every aspect and this is just not traditionally what this is not like to use sabin's words this is not the spirit the spirit of college athletics it's not oh, absolutely not it's, it's not even close anymore, and it's Mm-mm. it's sad to watch it just crumble because of greed and selfishness. And look, you could say, I think it's greedy and selfish. And I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I'm saying that's what it is. That that that's what it is. And but it's at so it's at so many levels though. It's at so many levels. I'm not just just blame. Yeah, I'm, I'm not blaming just the athletes. No, they're puppets on a string, kinda. I mean, well, they know. Yeah, I taking mean, advantage of them. Yeah, they're being taken advantage of. And, and I think that, you know, you know, so I had told Joe, Joe, I had told you that 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 I thought I saw a quote from Quadir that said, you know, he wants to play at a basketball school. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't find that quote anymore. So but I just wanted you to know. I don't know if it's true unless you've seen it. Oh, I haven't seen it. Okay. I heard it from right. you. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I haven't seen it again. I thought I saw it on one of those. You know how Syracuse.com puts out those like eye-catching yeah, yeah. uh, meme things? You know, I thought I saw it on one of those, and I just kind of scrolled past it. Like, it didn't bother me until I really thought about it. But anyway, um, you you know, we don't know what's going on with uh, Judah Mintz. You know, what kind of ducks is he getting in a row? And, you know, we can talk about Chris Bell, right? I mean... Body language tells me Chris Bell's not extremely happy. Maybe he's just real mellow like that. I don't know. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, he could be. But, you know, kind of like a Malik Brown. Like, I don't feel like a Malik Brown is unhappy. Um, you know, so we'll see. I did expect to see more of this after Justin and Quadir left. But I'll say this. You know, the fans – kind of dogging coach Autry because coach Autry said, you know, when you get a post, you get a, you get a postseason opportunity, you take it. And then we found out that Syracuse took themselves out. Well, something told, I believe that's what coach red believes and thinks I do. I believe those coaches wanted to play. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that only no, leads us to believe season. that, th- that it wasn't good enough for some or many or who knows. Right. Right. Well, I mean, we finished the season with what eight healthy scholarship players. Eight, which is which is threading a needle as it is. Right. So then to say that they don't want to play and that they want to get there now, now you have, now you're down to six. Now you're really going to go into a tournament like and, that. And say they're quiet here. And I mean, this is all hypothetical. I'm just saying. Say they're quiet here and Justin. Then what? What do you do? You know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, and we don't know what other shoes going to drop. And, You're gonna have Kyle Cuff coming off the bench. And I and by the way, like it's been what? It's been since Monday, really, right? It's been since Sunday, Monday morning. Then we get Monday's when the transfer yeah. portal opens. So so 
I haven't listened to any other Joe's favorite podcasts. Um, I haven't listened to. Okay. Well, I wish I knew what they were saying. I'd be very curious because my focus is solely on uh, what this has become and how sad it is to me that this is the product that we're going to have to endure from now on. And I mean, it's just not, I don't know, to have to build a team to win a championship every year is it's just so it's highly unlikely for a, for a school like Syracuse to get there for basketball. I'm talking, well, yeah, I'm talking about basketball yeah. right now. Right. I mean, yeah. So I, I listened to, um, Brian Higgins, you know, like I said, the, the ESPN was that or uh, yeah, Q yeah, sports yeah, talk or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and basically, I mean, it's almost like, I'm not saying that. I mean, I don't think, they don't really sometimes get as emotional, you know. They, they do a radio show and they've done it. They do it daily, so you know. Oh, they get. But paid. it's almost like well, it's almost like it's it is what it is, right? I mean, we can sit here and we can have our opinions and we can sit here and you know bring up why we don't think this is a good idea. But at the end of the day, right now, these are, these are the rules. This is what we have to deal with. So, yeah. right, two guys went in the transfer portal. Okay, like now you know what are we doing with Judah? I told you, you know that who knows, um, you know there's. A bunch of reasons why players go in the transfer portal. Just because you go in the transfer portal doesn't mean you can't come back. And um, it's true. And at the same time, there's some players that go into the transfer portal because they're happy about NIL stuff or maybe their position on the team, right? And so he could go in there and he can start, he- you know, hearing from some suitors, and and then he can use that as a bargaining chip, right? Go back to Syracuse and say, look, I really want to stay here, but this is what the deal is. Um, so. It's not, we're not out of the woods yet, you know, and I did speak to you about maybe because Judah is still, we are waiting to hear, but maybe Judah said he's coming back and maybe Quadir got mad because he assumed he was going to be the starting point guard next year. Like, we don't know. Uh, what did Jesse Edwards seemed, leave to make? I want to say it was either, I think it was 800000 or 850000 something like that. We were about 600000 away from what West Virginia offered. Okay. So, I mean... How many games did he over. end up playing? He got injured, right? He got injured. He broke his wrist. They only won 10 games. Um, you yeah. know, I, like I told you yes the other day, I'd be I'd be willing to... I, I'm, I kind of want to wonder, did he get all that money? You know? Yeah, is there um, stipulations or clauses in contracts where if you don't play a certain amount of games or you don't, they, the team doesn't win a certain amount of games that, you know, you uh, get... X amount of percentage instead of a hundred, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, who knows what, what kind of goes on behind closed doors and we're seeing how most of the sausage is made, but we don't know the fine details. Right. So, right. um, you know, but I'm just, just as an example, I mean, you know, he, he barring the injury, you know, in different circumstances and being in Syracuse, like they'd be a tournament team. In my opinion, I just don't believe it, it, for a second that they wouldn't be a tournament team right now. We'd be talking about NCAA tournament games and not this garbage because we wouldn't be here. And look, it, there's no way to, there's no way to fix it. It is what it is. But I'm just saying, you know, I think Jesse made a move for money, and I don't think it worked out for Jesse. Like you said yesterday, Joe, how 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 they tripped about Jesse pretty early in the season, and now. I mean, you didn't hear nothing about. You didn't hear anything about Jesse Edwards. No, no. But the, the the telling thing too is is that you know you had one donor from West Virginia put up all that money for Jesse, and all we could eke out was two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand. We couldn't have some. I mean, we don't have somebody that's like locked and loaded with you know. Oh yeah, we did. That's right. We stopped messing with them. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, mean you know, some of that's some of that's somewhat i'm just saying legit you don't have i any feel like alumni or booster you can go to him and be like someone can go to him and be like hey look we're 200 for get quarter mil and we can have jesse edwards back next year and this dude's a millionaire or some you know what i mean like we don't got that but we're competing with teams that have a lot of that stuff you know how many you know that texas oil money you know what i mean how many how much money you think those schools down in texas are coming up with nil money Stuff yeah. that we can't compete with, right? Right. And so that's, right. as long as it's about the money for a player, we probably ain't going to win that. 
win that battle. So, um, I, I mean, you got to take a different approach, right? You got to go the Fran Brown approach. Um, he, he doesn't want it. That's the first thing he want to hear about is money. You know, when he's talking about Dart and all this other stuff, you know, that's what's kind of getting me to buy in a little bit with him. You know, the uh, what is it? Discipline and accountability. Was it was it resilience or resilience in tough? I thought it was resilience or relentlessness, something one of the two, right? But that's what he's expecting from his players. He don't want to hear about money. He don't want to hear about any of that. He wants to know that he can trust these players. He wants to know that these players are going to be loyal because he's going to be loyal to them. So hopefully there is a light at the end of the tunnel with some of this stuff because I think, again, this is eventually going to, you know, rear its ugly head. You know, looking at Fan Nation, NIL Fan Nation. 10% 10% of D1 men's basketball players already entered the transfer portal. By the end of Tuesday night, two days, 48 hours, there was 555 players in the transfer portal already. It's relentless. One out of, relentless, one, relentless, by the way. Okay, relentless, okay. One out of every one out of t- t- every 10 college players, according to Fan Nation, uh, this uh, article, one out of every 10 players joined or uh, entered the transfer portal. It's crazy. But – to Brian Higgins, to what he was talking about was basically, look, I mean, it's, it stinks losing Quadir. You know, he spoke about, you know, Justin Taylor and how even on his way out, there was fans that were still ridiculing him and criticizing him. And um, well, that's gonna make the also- that's gonna make the angry fans angrier. Justin had a good opportunity to develop here. That's what. That's my opinion. I believe so, too. But uh, the one thing that he brought up yesterday when I was listening to was essentially um, that Judah, you know, remember last year, you know, Judah, we didn't know what he was going to do. And then he, um, okay, I'm going to, you know, try my talents in the NBA, but I'm not going to get a, you know, get an agent so that I can come back, right? And then he goes, and then on the last day, the last day that they could announce whether you're going to stay in the NBA draft or come back, he waited till then to announce that he was coming back. And to what Brian Higgins, what he was talking about yesterday, and his point is, Judah, you you can't be that selfish of a player this year just for attention. Um, we need to know. Quartier just left. We need to know whether or not you're staying or not. So we know whether or not. And I don't know. Maybe it's a thing where he's just waiting for a certain amount of time. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what he's waiting on, but – it's going to be real hard for him to do the same thing he did last year and go through this all the way through, you know, May or early June or whatever and lose the opportunity to possibly get, you know, because there's going to be some great point guards that are coming from smaller schools and transferring from bigger schools that maybe their coach got fired and they're going to want a starting position. Some of these players are going to want a guaranteed starting position. Some of them, that's what they care about, especially if they're graduate transfers more than the money is to move up from a slower level conference team that they've been kicking butt in and prove that he can do it in a big level and put him in a situation where he might get drafted, right? So if Judah hangs around and he just holds this over our heads for the next couple months, all this doing is hurting our team. So, I mean, and that's what Brian Higgins was talking about yesterday on his show. It's basically, you know, come on, Judah, like make a decision. I'll give you a week, I'll give you two, but at some point here, we need to figure it out so we can move forward. It would be different if Quetier were still on the roster, right? Yeah, I think that I think so. If it was just Justin Taylor, this wouldn't even be. I'm even. I'm not even sure if I would have developed. You know, I've I've thought that for a minute about how I hate how much I hate it, um, but I don't think it would have impacted me like emotionally, like just not not anger, but just frustration and. uh if Quadir stayed, I kind of expected Taylor and didn't surprise me in town. Let's put it that way. But Quadir did Quadir that surprised me. And for a guy who is a fan favorite, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter anymore. The loyalty, I just don't think is there. And, um, it, God forbid if this stuff happened in the eighties and nineties, you know what, where we'd be now, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Like you have like legacy players, for Syracuse that you probably there's a good chance maybe you wouldn't have them I don't know I have no idea it's true you know it's it just it's changed the game to a point where it's just made it not fun for me um, I put a poll out on Twitter 
Has the NIL and portal been good for NCAA basketball and football? I include I include both of those because um, they're the two most impacting, obviously, right? So, mm-hmm. 289 votes. Um, a resounding 63% said no. Uh, your choices were yes, no, portal only, or NIL only. And um, to be honest with you, it's kind of weird. I I've, I figured um, NIL only would have been a little bit more, you know, a little bit less. That was second place with 21.8. Um, so people do believe, first of all, people believe that both of them affected it more than anything, 63%. And that second comes the money issue. But again, that's the thing, right? Is and again, we've always spoke about Syracuse as like family, right? And you know, usually the players they go through play three or four years. We see them develop. You can see him as a freshman, be like, oh man, he's going to be good, and see the growth. Oh man, he's going to get excited about him, right? And then you know, they're in the community, and it feels like a family. And that's why you have so many players come back. You know, when Beheim retired and players come back just to go to games and, and they're, they're, they're just part of there's a lot of players that are still part of this com- that community. Right. So um, the more this goes towards that and the less that the players care about the community and the school and the fans and like you said, the loyalty then I feel like the less the fans are going to start caring. And it's not like they won't watch the game, but like. Okay, maybe instead of getting season tickets, we're only going to go to a couple games, right? Maybe instead of putting in yeah. NIL money, um, you know, I'm not going to put in NIL money, you know, because it's just it's whatever. You know what I mean? I, I paid that guy or, you know, we paid that guy last year. We put in this money. He just left anyway, right? So yeah, at the end yeah. of the day. You, you get jaded by stuff like that. I mean, you know, it, it, we're only human, right? So right. you get jaded. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I thought I thought twice about i mean am i gonna donate the amount of money i donated this year to and i to to another collective like i started thinking i mean i'm like i don't know man i'd rather just write a check to someone who's going to give the money directly to a player like i'd be all for that right contractual yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm. give me two years oh 100 you know what i'm saying like this collective thing orange united which i donated to and i pushed on this program um I don't know what percentage is going to the kids. I started thinking about this just the past couple. We of know days. how much. Well, do, not only that, but do we have a situation where we don't even know really where they're going to? Right, that's another thing. So, just realistically, I, I don't. It's always sketchy when you do stuff like that, right? Like nonprofits. Oh, give to this nonprofit, right? But like we all know. Someone's getting some of that money. And it's just one of those things where if people continue to pay NIL and they continue to try to support, go to the game, they're spending their money, and then these kids just want to bail. I mean, at what point are the fans going to be just to screw it? Are we going to start losing on attendance? I mean, I feel like this is, we've, we've been going down in attendance anyway the last couple of years, some of it because of our performance, but also probably it has to do with the economy up there, right? So um, it's not easy for everybody. And uh, just this is just, it just almost pushes it, you know, it just pushes it over the edge a little bit to me to where at what point is it going to be the fans don't care and then we don't have any ANL support. Then what happens? Yeah. I mean, yet to be seen, I believe. Um, back to Twitter. Uh, I got a couple more here. It's, um, well, I won't go over that. I mean, he, he, Q's water boy responded to mine. Let's go to some rig, original stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't see that before, so I haven't read it yet, but, um, this is a hundred percent on the NCAA for not putting up guardrails and having a plan in place. Um, they just opened Pandora's box with chaos players. Absolutely should benefit from NL, but I, it can't just be everyone chasing the bag and no focus on development. Maybe a transfer limit to then sit out. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, th- that's kind of what I'm talking about, too. To for the most part, I I think that I think obviously, dude, I'm behind the players being able to make money off their name. I mean, hello, oh yeah, hello, that's this is America. Issue. That's not the issue. Okay, that's not the issue. Um, like we pay into it. Yeah, the, you know, <laughs> we're the, not against it. We're right, giving you money. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, you know, it's not that. It's that the NCAA ruins everything. They ruin everything. They 
are they are the fourth branch of government and they they just yeah. suck so, at what they do so it's people like people in power period people in power government ncaa they just suck at what they do they're terrible at it it's self-interest yeah. self-pleasuring it's a circle full of jerks you know what i'm saying well and like yeah and at the end of the day like i said what's where's the money funneling funneling right it's always about following the money right and it's like hey well these players need money right and and and, and I mean, it could, it could be an argument that giving these players that much money at this young of an age and not holding them accountable and allowing them to stay where they decided to to go to school and grow as a person and become adults, that giving them that money and allowing them to just decide everything that they want to do, now that's probably hurting a lot of players' chances to make even more money later down in the road. On top of the fact of taking away more money from – the middle class and people that are paying to buy tickets, fans playing, paying into monthly NIL things, right? So they're paying money. Boom, that's going to the players. Those players, they're going to spend it. That's not like a few money. That's not money that's going to they're going to you know graduate and have money to buy a house and all that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's. I mean, players in the NFL that go through college without NIL money, they go bankrupt. There's a big percentage of players that do that stuff. So at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, yes, maybe some of this money going home to the parents, to mom or someone and making, you know, brothers, sisters making their lives a little easier. Yes, there's that, too. But at the end of the day, all that money is just it's coming what out of our pockets into the players pockets, players into what bills, consumer buying stuff gone. Right. Meanwhile, what happens? You have good enough NIL. You pay your players. Your school gets more money. So now. All this money and all this revenue is coming in from the consumerism. All it is is making the richer rich or the rich richer. Realistically, when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. I think it's boiled down. The The main point is, 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 a, is, a, is a smaller than that. I do. I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I think boi- I just, I mean, boiled, I know, boiled but... down, you can keep this in a very small you could keep this in a very small conversation. Oh, you and that and, can, and, and that is and that is that, that that kids are super entitled now. Um, they're being told they can make money immediately. Um, it is brainwashing. It is there's no accountability. It's instant gratification. It, it just it all of these thing all of these cultural things beyond what I think that. Which is a good point. I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm on the same page with you with that. But it's these, it's, it's, it's cultural things. It's, and, and when I say culture, I mean like the the era we live in with social media and the era we live in with just the 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 ability to do this stuff in the open and have people make money on the backs of players, which is what they were already doing. They were already doing this. And now, yeah. now, now the players, the players just can't get in trouble for getting paid for it. You know, who was it that got all the tattoos? He was, he was paid with tattoos, basically suffered tremendously. Who, who was that? Do you remember? It's a football player. Uh, he was a quarterback at Ohio state. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> they weren't even giving the guy cash. He was getting paid in tattoos. Like third, third, uh, prior. Yes, uh, prior. that's right. X Raider. Uh, I mean, yeah, he turned a receiver in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what what are what are we doing? You know, the guy got punished for getting tattoos back in the day, and this is what we're doing now. I mean, it wasn't another era; like it, it was just a few years ago. It's so yeah. it's so out of control. It's so out of control. Uh, let, let's head back over to Twitter. Let's do a couple more of these, Joe, and we'll wrap this thing up. Um, at Zach E. F- Flynn. Flynn, flying, fleeing. Uh, Dean. People, people voting no are not realizing that the product, at least in basketball, was hurt significantly. They were losing more recruits than ever to overseas in uh, development leagues. NIL isn't perfect, but it's it's better than not getting any top talent, any any top end talent at all. I mean, look, we've talked about it. We've talked about that. This will stop that, right? Well, it hasn't. We're still dealing with the same thing. It's, it's it's the same thing. So how can you say that the people what? voting no don't realize that the product, at least in basketball, was hurt significant? Is the product being hurt, Joe? 
Well, I mean, I think what the what he's speaking to is is that for the past couple the all- of years, there's there's been like alternative development leagues that you can go in right from high school, or right. you can go right from high school to overseas and then go and get drafted. So what he's We've saying made is that point. more college. So college basketball isn't even seeing a lot of the best players because they're choosing and opting to not go to college basketball and go to these other leagues. Now that there's NIL money involved, then there's the feeling of the fact that basically these people are now going to go to college and get this money instead. And that, but we're talking about, I mean, let's be honest here last year, who, whoever um, pays the most money for the best players is going to win the most games. But even, but there was NIL last year. Yeah. And last year in like the top 10 picks in the NBA draft, I want to say three or four of them were kids that didn't go to high school, like Scoot Henderson, the two Thompson twins. Like we don't even know about them because they didn't go to college. They went to this other developmental league straight from high school and they ended up being top 10 picks. Do you think that they think that they made a bad decision <laughs> by not going to college? And there was NIL involved as well. And what I'm saying is you're talking about a handful of kids here. You're talking about eight, nine, ten kids. Okay. Like eight, nine, ten kids, and you sprinkle them around NCAA basketball in the 50 or 60, however many power five conferences there is, then you're really not, I mean, you're not saving college basketball. I think that there's players that, think, and people think that college basketball, I think the fans, they understand that it's college basketball, and they understand that, you know, a lot of these players aren't going to be NBA players, right? So, um, and I, and I think that, that, and, you know, NCAA basketball, I think is fine as far as, um, you know, being a good product and being, I mean, last year's tournament was great to watch and it didn't have four or five, maybe six of the best, you know, a couple of the best high school recruits, but we didn't know them. We never saw them. It didn't, and it didn't make a difference. So I, I don't agree with that one. I'm not really even sure about the product. It's more of an emotional attachment to the team that I grew up with. And I mean, you know, Syracuse basketball was the first sport I fell in love with. And this is what this is what it is now. It's it pisses me off a little bit. It's frustrating. Uh, a couple more here. At trade CNBC, whatever the hell that means. Worse for basketball, I'd say those kids seem to get disconnected quicker. I guess football guys understand getting bigger takes time plus experience and Plus, experience and bigger is almost always better in football. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of cruise by this one, I mean, Nick Saban was on Capitol Hill with the boobs. And uh, they're having problems in football, too. I I think it's probably a good point that maybe we see it more in basketball. Like, like it's it's more obvious. In basketball, right? First of all, it's less yeah. players. It's less oh, players. Less players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, it's a good point, but I, I would say it comes down to it's less players. It's, it's, it's you know, um, you, you get more attached to your core group of guys. And um, seems like the loyal, loyalty, as, loyalty aspect there is, um, is a little bit more – it's a little bit more um, – Gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little bit more relevant, I feel like. Like, you know, it's a little bit more personal, I feel like, in in the basketball world. And so it's different. It is different in that aspect, I feel. And so. you see the faces. You see the faces a lot. Helmets. Yeah, you, you know, there's 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 more emotion. There's there's just, you know, just take quad ear. I mean, the, the dude's a showman, right? I mean... Um, you know all the thing that this this the the um, the mannerisms in, in come across just in basketball way different than football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a little bit more personal, I think, and that's the difference. Um, let's do let's do another one here here. Uh, all right, finish it up with this, I guess. Uh, at Syracuse Nerd Forty Four, college athletes deserve to be paid. No, one, I'm not saying that at all, but paying someone more to get us to a a school is dumb. It shouldn't be even. The portal is horrible. I'd say neither just the NIL. That's a that's a tough comment to read. Well, <laughs> actually, I so, think what you say. Yeah, please. Go to to yeah. So he had an extra two in there, but okay, he just okay. said school is dumb. And basically, I think he missed a comma there and then said it should be even. I think what he's talking about is that the transfer portal money should be even across the board. 
for every single team, right? Like we talked about before, you have a cap of how you, much you can spend you every year. You should have a cap, but I, I, look, I don't know if that fixes things. Um, I think there. I mean, it kind of does. You can't be asking for a crap ton of money. I mean, some of these schools Who's can the probably. Dude? I mean, it's going to get to a point to where some of these basketballs, you're going to be able to pay like your starters a million dollars a year. Who's the dude? USC. Is it USC? We talked about. I brought it up yesterday. I, I forget the guy's name. Oh, that's how much, okay. that's how much I give a crap. Uh, demanding a a um, share of the stake of the team that he gets drafted to, and like, like what? Could you shut the f-, f up, pal. What the hell? Do you, who, who are you? What is where is this coming from? Like that's this that's the pre- whoever whoever drafts that dude if he does get drafted that sets the precedent that will never that's another problem that's their problem that's the NFL's problem. Mm. It, it, I don't yeah. think it's gonna happen. Would you draft a guy like that? <laughs> no, hell no, right? You just no. <laughs> I don't even think he's that good. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would have taken him at Syracuse, but I don't think he's like number wood number one. I should have a a, a piece of the damn. Business. Stake of the share, you know what I mean? or share of the stake, yeah. or share whatever. <laughs> Besides, I think that's illegal. Uh, I don't think anything's illegal anymore. Right. No, as far as that no, goes, I think Syracuse. Well, yeah, we never know, right? Syracuse nerd. I think he kind of hit it. Like, I mean, yeah, it, it should be even, but even if it's not, like he said, the portal is ho- the portal is horrible. I'd say neither are just nil. <clears throat> so I think kind of right there. I think that what you need to do is you need to fix the transfer rule. You need to tr- fix the transfer rule and then see what that does. Because at least that forces kids to make a decision because it's too easy to just say, oh, I'm just going to put myself in the transfer portal, wait to see who's going to come chase me and what are they going to give me, right? And then you're going to be able to just go ahead and, and go and start versus, yeah, you can put yourself in the portal. You can come see who's going to chase you and this, this, and that, but you got to sit out a year. Um, so you got to sit out so you go a whole year and a half of not playing and doing your college and your this and that. And I don't know if they're going to give you NIL while you're not playing. So shouldn't get anything while you're not playing. Uh, what about um, what about this here? Uh, not real penguins. Not real penguins on Twitter. Transfer portal is fine. You want out, enter the portal, but leaving the team just for money isn't right. It's not college anymore. It's minor league professionals now. What about one would just why don't you just start a minor league? Just start a minor league and be done with it. I, I just feel like back to the G League comment, that kind of like what we were talking about. I mean, you know, we thought this, I thought, I'm going to speak for you. I thought this would f- fix that. But it seems to me it doesn't, it hasn't, it's, it's, it's six and one, half a dozen in the other. And unless you fix the, the portal issue and maybe a cap, then, then this is just going to get s- dumber and dumber every year. Yeah. And you could argue, too, that they allow this to happen to keep the kids in school. It's kind of towards the point of, um, what, Zach? Zach Fien? Zachy Fien? Whatever that is. Zachy Feeney? Yeah, well, I'm glad um, you did the same thing I did. Yeah. So, it, um, I think that they, they were seeing kids go early because they're like, look, I got a limited amount of years. We said it before. I've got a little bit limited amount of years that I can make money playing a game and good money. So if I think I can go make money, I'm going to go. Even if it's try out the NBA, go second round. Okay. Oh, G league, try that for a couple of years. Don't make it in the NBA. Okay. Now I'm out to China or I'm out to wherever where you make really good money in some of those leagues. Um, so now, honestly, I think that doing that, I think was taking away a lot of the better players. Um, from college and they were leaving earlier, but um, also that takes money away from the university's pockets, right? And it takes money away from the NCAA's pockets. So, hey, we give them a little bit of money and now they're going to stop doing that. They'll stay in longer, you know, Baycott, some of these other guys. Um, so to a, to a point, you know, to a point, yeah, that's kind of, I, I think that's why that, that was allowed in the first place, you know? I mean, I think that at the end of the day, I think, this whole thing about it's for the players, it's for, oh, for NCA for the players. It's just a false flag. Anything that they do, the NCA's they, for the NCA. Hey, they're doing it for themselves. Yeah, they're looking at how they can help them in the I'm universities. Yeah. Um. All right, Joe. Any closing thoughts? I mean, I don't know when we'll be back. Joe's gonna be sad. He was so excited today that we were coming on here. 
He was. He's I a, was. <laughs> he was. He's. Well, they just started spring practice, I think, right? Oh yeah, that's great. Yep. Something they like did. that. They so, did. They did. Yeah. A couple of weeks in a couple of weeks, I think there'll be a spring game. I think it's going to be on ACC Network. So. I don't know. We could come back after that, or if there's enough news <laughs> that you know. I don't know why you're laughing. Man. I don't know why. You're oh why you're man! Oh gosh! It's, it's, it's not funny. It's really. It's, it's not. not funny. It's just it's really not. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why you're laughing. Oh, Joe. My God, man. Future? Are you going to keep me future? doing this until, like, am I going to stop? Am I going to retire from my job and still be doing this stupid <laughs> podcast? Is that is that the road I'm going down? I sit in this stupid room in the back of my house and okay. record this thing? I'm out. First off, number one. <laughs> oh, all right. my gosh. I'm not I could have, by the way, I'm not going to get to smoke a cigar. It's 630. That's an hour and a half endeavor, and it's not going to happen. I did this instead. Dude, we started this at 5.30. If it was an hour and a half endeavor, you knew that you weren't smoking a cigar regardless. I was trying to be done at 6. I would smoke what I could. You know? Uh, all right. All right. I mean, look. I'm just... Look. I started this. You asked me if I wanted to do this. I started this. You wanted to do this. Eight years so ago. Now you make it sound like I'm... Eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. We've grown up it's so just, much since It's then. not fun anymore? It, I've told you 10 times this episode, this is not fun anymore. <laughs> well, you thought you were talking about college basketball and the NIL. Uh, this, 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 the podcast. this any, no, everything, this whole thing, it's not fun anymore. It's not. All right. <laughs> oh, man. We'll see. We'll see when we come back. I had a nice little break. It was a nice little break. You know? I was really. That's really, what I was just gonna say. Is it just this is just you, uh... dude? It's a gauntlet, man. And we said we were gonna do something different this year, and we didn't. We just did the same thing we always do, which is get here every second we can. It's true. Mm-hmm. Anyway, no, we can figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It, I, I, I'll it tell you what. Like I'm at least doing saying, a man. season of Fran Brown anyway. So there's that. We'll go from there. Fair. I'm committing to that, and we'll go from there. Okay. If that ends up sucking, gonna... though, I'm scrubbing everything from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I'm going to say is that it sounded like you were trying to basically get to the point where you were like, all right, this is the last podcast until fall ball. Sorry. I was pushing that. I was pushing it. I was. I was. I knew you wouldn't let it happen. We'll see. Joe begs me during the off season. Hey man, it's been two weeks. Don't you think we should do something to stay relevant? I mean, <laughs> for God's sakes, we've been doing it eight years. If 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 we're not relevant yet, then I don't know if we'll ever be. Come on. By the way, we're not, <laughs> and we won't, and we won't. So it is what it is. Love you yeah. guys. Appreciate all of you. This. No, Despite no, that's not it. That's it. And that's probably a good reason why people don't even bother. Anyway, I appreciate all of you for tuning in. Um, we'll be back here at some point, maybe. Not sure. We'll see. Whenever Joe gets super bored, I'm sure he'll bug me. Till then, we're out. For Joe, I'm Sean. <laughs>